Hey, Gary Hoover here again. I'm doing the third and last of this little this brainstorm I did on this whiteboard. At first, I talked about my three big ideas of um, the global nature of the world. <laughs> I guess that's kind of obvious, huh? Uh, uh, service and enterprise. And then I talked about changing some of these definitions. Here, I want to talk about technology. Uh, when I say technology, I mean any better way of doing things. My old economics teacher, Milton Friedman, he later won a Nobel Prize, wonderful man, wonderful teacher. He would talk about how maybe the way chickens are raised was one of the most important technologies of the 20th century. And I know a lot of people were down on factory farming now and everything, but what Pilgrim's Pride and Tyson's and Purdue and all those people did well, really did lower the cost of nutrition, increase the availability and accessibility of protein worldwide. And it was a huge thing. And so any better way of doing things, not just computers and hardware and what we may think of as technology or high technology, all sorts of technologies. But one of the things that I've observed is that every technology has its pluses and minuses, has its pros and cons. It's just running down through some of these technologies broadly defined. So television, I can, I've done uh, history talks and there are videos online on the McCombs Business School website at UT, University of Texas, um, at Austin. Uh, they, there's um, the history of the movie industry, the airline industry, the auto industry, the computer industry, and the retailing industry. And as I looked at all those and really thought about these different technologies and what's the most important or what had the biggest impact on our lives, uh, you can make a really strong case, nothing tops television. Now, it's got some fierce competitors. The automobile and the airplane alone are just amazing what they've done and how they've changed our lives. But television is so powerful. And even now, with a few years on it, it's stronger than ever. If you look at the share of people's time worldwide that they spend in front of a TV set, or if you think more broadly in terms of video and film, the whole, all the filmed entertainment like this right now that you're watching, it's just enormous. And, 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 and yet, and, and television has done a lot of wonderful wonderful things. I mean, I think I learned Spanish from watching Spanish language TV shows or Zorro when I was a kid or whatever, you know, learn a little bit of Spanish anyway. Um, and there's so much you can learn from all this stuff. And you look at PBS and all that. But on the other hand, it's clearly got a dark side. There's some programming that's full of violence or other things we don't like or people run ads for things we don't believe in. Um, and and um, the amount of time it takes and the way it may take us away from communicating with our friends and everything. So, you know, everything's got its pros and cons. Detergent, you may not think of that as a technology, but when you used to do your laundry, you'd get soap scum or stains or whatever uh, all over things. And then they came out in the late 40s, Procter & Gamble, a big commercial breakthrough was uh, Tide, still an important product of that company. And that was a big deal and people loved it. And then they found out, oh, it's got phosphates in it and, um, you know, we shouldn't uh, use that and change it around, whatever. Nuclear power, that's always the big one, or nuclear in general. Obviously, the dark side is really dark and uh, the, the death and destruction that nuclear um, weapons is unspeakable. The good side, you know, it depends on who you talk to, but there, there is one. Um, autos, yeah, I think it's one of the most greatest things ever invented. I think it's clearly changed the world, even our society, how we eat, how we go to the bank, whatever, you know. But there are people who wish the auto had never been invented. I'm not one of them. But, you know, there, there are, you know, negative things that come along with it. Um, IQ tests, that was a new technology. They figured out how to assess at least one type of intelligence. They called it intelligence quotient and then tested people and they found that very useful and very helpful. On the other hand, it probably put a bunch of people got tested tested into a box. It wasn't healthy for them. Whether it's a box that says, oh, you're a genius and you don't have to work or whatever, and you just sit there and think, or, oh, you're stupid, forget you. You know, so there's a bad side. The fast food chain, major, major American innovation uh, the, of the mid 20th century really got cooking with McDonald's and everything, I guess, literally cooking. Been emulated all over the world. I love to go to the fast food chains in the Philippines and Guatemala and everything, the local ones. and and. The ability to bring clean, repeatable, you can count on the food, you know you're not going to get sick if you eat a McDonald's hamburger, and to support local entrepreneurs and let people get more control over their own fate because most of these fast food chains are franchise organizations which create much more local wealth and energy and so on. 
or a great deal. And now, you know, people are down on them because of the nature of the food they sell and everything, but that can change. But it's still, it's a major technology. The railroad, amazing. Just watch a train sometimes. It's like two men or two women, whatever, driving that thing, and it's like a mile long, and it weighs gazillions of tons, at least two or three gazillion. And, and, and it, there's no friction. The sucker just rolls. It doesn't take much to keep it rolling. It's getting it started. That's the hard part. It's one of the most amazing technologies ever invented. It's whatever it is, 300 years old, give or take now. Um, good and bad, because people, a lot of people died and lost arms and legs in the 19th century. And even today, there are accidents. Airplanes. Oh, man, what a wonderful thing. But just in the last uh, few days, there have been two uh, air show crashes, and a bunch of people were killed in Nevada. Terrible thing. Um, the Internet, it's got its positives, it's got its negatives. It brings things we hadn't anticipated. You take e-commerce, which is so wonderful that I can look at all these things from all over the world, how neat it is to get them, and thanks to UPS, and they're here in two days or one day or whatever. And yet, you know, there's a, there are things it brings up. And there are a lot of people talking about Walmart and how it's really hurt local independent businesses and so on. That's a separate discussion. But not very often when I hear those discussions do I hear people talk about, well, how many people has Amazon driven out of business? Uh, you know, it's a machine, and it creates a lot fewer jobs than Walmart relative to the, the volume it does and everything. And you know, there's a, there's a loss to the e-commerce, a social aspect, and the same is true of a lot of the Internet. You can say, oh, social media is stronger than ever, but are we spending less time talking to each other? In any case, what I'm, all I'm saying here is I don't know if I've ever met a technology that's all bad and all evil. If you really understand it, really look at it. And I've certainly never met one that was all good. Um, and we need to understand that when we go into these technologies and we get all excited about them. We need to think hard about it. Uh, those are just some of the ideas floating around in my mind. I hope you're doing all right. I'll see you soon.